All right. Um, I think uh, we already have quite uh, 12 people with us here. And I would love to go on and say, ladies and gentlemen, um, educators and advocates of accessible knowledge, uh, welcome to the extraordinary webinar on open education resources, better known as OER. Today, we gather to explore the transformative power of OER and delve into a realm of education possibilities that knows no boundaries. So in a world where education is a fundamental right, yet access to quality resources remains unequal. We see this evident in South Sudan and other countries. OER emerges as a beacon of hope. Uh, these resources freely available to all break down barriers and foster a culture of open collaboration, empowering educators and learners to chart their own education resources journeys as well. So I'm honored uh, to be able to introduce to you our esteemed facilitator that is Ricardo, uh, a Brazilian researcher, lecturer, and consultant uh, specializing in innovation, management, and social political inclusion. With over 20 years of experience in the realms of digital tools, uh, human rights and sustainable development, Ricardo brings a wealth of expertise uh, to guide us through this webinar. So today, Ricardo will unveil the intricacies of open education resources, uh, taking us on a captivating journey of exploration. We will discover how OER, with their free accessibility, permissions for adaptation, and collaborative nature, enable educators like all of us here to transcend traditional boundaries and cultivate innovative learning environments. Through practical insights, success stories, and invaluable tools, Ricardo will equip us to harness the power of OER and revolutionize our approach to education. But one very important thing that I would love to mention is that this is uh, this webinar uh, is, is, a, is a part of a series of webinars uh, from AskNet, an initiative uh, that is known as the Access to Skills and Knowledge Network. Uh, ASNET is a global community of passionate individuals and uh, organizations working tirelessly to build a sustainable network of trainers and empowered individuals. It's also a network of different um, uh, media organizations. Uh, uh, South Sudan is led in Uganda, uh, South Sudan, of course, and also we're looking at other places as well. So together we strive to address specific challenges uh, faced by communities and transform uh, cultural patterns that fuel conflict and inequality. Uh, through these collaborations, uh, we aim to make skills and knowledge available uh, to all. So breaking down barriers and creating a more equitable world. So I would love to invite you to this remarkable and amazing journey of open education resources. And of course, just say that everyone who is on the call right now you're so, 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 so super welcome uh, so that we can be able to jump to this. I guess, Ricardo, I would love to welcome you straight forward uh, to be able to say something to our amazing audience that is here. But uh, before you actually come in, we know very well that this will be an amazing webinar that uh, will be able to allow us to gain new skills. But apart from that, also, we should trade this respect. So please, if you would love to speak, I want you to be able to at least um, either raise your hand and be at least mute if you're not speaking uh, so that all of us can be able to listen to the amazing words that Ricardo will be able to give us today. Otherwise, uh, thank you so much, uh, Ricardo. You are welcome to um, this amazing session. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Romeo. I I even don't have words, you know, after such a bright presentation, but I will do my best. And uh, so hello everyone. I know some of you that are here. Hello, Eva, hello Ini, Matthew, and uh, Wafila, and the ones that I still don't know. I hope we can personally meet soon. Uh, and Stephen has said hello already, and Yara. Uh, so, first of all, I would like us to introduce ourselves, you know, nothing different from our other online sessions we've been hosting in our life in the last three years, maybe, since the beginning of the pandemic, this thing became so normal. So, I will introduce myself saying, what's my name? why I am here, and what do I expect from this moment together. So I'm Ricardo, 
I'm from Brazil and I live in Brazil, northeastern Brazil. When you think of Brazil, you think one of those beaches. I live close to one of those beaches, but it's rainy, it's polluted, politicians are not that good, you know, so it's just a normal country. Uh, I'm here because Stephen have been inviting me for some relations with AskNet crew because I'm such a fan of your network. Uh, I'm also glad to know that you are open to more members, you know, and maybe you can have an AskNet member in Brazil soon. Uh, and my expectations here is that after two days, uh, everyone around here will be able to share knowledge, you know, and, and to share what you are doing so people can replicate around. Uh, I think it's quite nice because the last meeting we had together, it was a discussion around um, how you can preserve your memory, you know, and how you can restructure, your, restructure a society using your personal stories, you know. And maybe open educational resources are places to share this memory, you know, and to, to help our history, our history build a better world. World, sorry. And I pass it to Matthew. Oh, my telephone is talking to me. I pass it to Matthew. Matthew, can you hear me? Hi, everyone. I'm sorry, a bit in emotion, but I can speak. I'm Matthew, I'm from South Sudan, live in Uganda, and right now I'm a refugee settlement. I'm a co founder and director for community creativity for development. And while I'm so happy to join this uh, workshop on uh, OER. And um, I'm currently in EA, in EA River County in South Sudan, uh, setting up CC for this satellite, or ASNET satellite in EA. And what I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward in this training or in this workshop is that I'd like to uh learn and learn and relearn uh things related to open resource education um so basically uh, i'll be happy you know to explore also new things in relation to oer and as well to transfer the knowledge after this training to the AskNet uh, team of CC for DEA in uh, the next coming days. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. And who do you pass to? I can, <laughs> sorry, I can pass to Vuga. Yes, hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Vuga, we can hear you. Hi, Vuga. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Vuga William. Um, I'm so Sudanese. Based and we work with the young people 
and we give a training on tech. Currently, we are doing a, a postcard, and, and uh, I'm team leader for that. Thank you. I'll talk later on. So I pass the mic at the moment to Daniel Sebit. Thank you, Vuga Daniel. Okay. Uh, good morning, members. I am my name is uh, Daniel Sebit, uh, South Sudanese refugee in Uganda. Uh, uh, I am a member of uh, Wikipedia and now I am seeing this uh, uh, link for the training for this workshop and uh, I am really interested to uh, get involved in a workshop so that we can learn uh, more from this workshop. So, um, and a continue. Okay, Daniel, and I pass it to Dirnaya. I don't know you, Dirnaya. Pleased to meet you. And I will take the opportunity that you have your camera on to pass it to you. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Dirnaya Dennis. Um, team leader and executive director of Conetta Hub. Um, not yet part of the network, but I'm glad to be here and to learn and to see what is next. Thank you. Thank you. And who do you pass to? Uh, Data Betwell. Data Beto, can you present yourself and say the reasons you are here, the expectations for the moment? Okay, I'll pass it to Julie as data may be not be available. Julie, do you hear us? You can also use the chat if you want, huh? Julie, can you hear? Yes, Julie, please. Good morning. Yes, morning. Yeah, this is Juliet Ayuo, uh, part yeah. of the team of Dream Production. This is my first time to be here. Uh, ready to share. Uh, to learn more with this platform. Yeah, Dream Production is a non profitable organization that feel and um, yeah, so looking forward to learning a lot from each one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Given. As the time is going by and we have more people coming, luckily, please feel free to present yourself in the chat so we can start with the content now. And I will share with you a link. So first of all, this webinar is a meta webinar. So what do I mean with this? All the content of this webinar is an open educational resource itself. So I mean that if you don't want to be here, you can just go through the page that I will share now and do your own webinar and also replicate it in your neighborhood with your community and the ones you love. But I will suggest you to stay because of the synergy that Kevin told some minutes ago, you know, I think the synergy is super nice and we can discuss more and we can learn together with all the mistakes we can have here. So, hello, George. Uh, and I shared the link to 
to the content here. You don't necessarily need to go there. You can go there later. You can keep it. You can use it to navigate throughout the chat here. But I will share my screen. So you'll also be able to lay down a little bit in your chair, you know, take a look in your mobile. The difference, I know many of you are in mobile now, so if you click the link, it, it might be easier for you to follow, you know, instead of see the screen. But feel free to do the way you prefer. I will share my screen just one second. Uh, yeah. And I want to share this window here. Share. And I hope you can see it now and it'll make it bigger. So is this good enough, the size? Can you can you see it? Uh, I cannot see the chat now. Just a second, I will open the chat again so we can keep oh, yeah, the chat. Can, I can see yeah. it. I think that we can Thank you very much, Yana. Yeah, it's it's fine, Ricardo. It's very good. Thank you. So basically, you know what we have here are the co here you have the content of our webinar. You know, in the left side you have all the chapters that we will pass through, and this is a classical Git book page but we will learn more about it soon. So welcome to this webinar. It looks like super white letters, black background. And yes, this is what we've been talking about today and tomorrow. But today we will talk about the basic concepts of open educational resource, you know, and uh, we, we will also try to understand how to plan your resources so you can publish it, all your learning and people can work over it, learn with it and build it over it. So the first session, it's about this introduction and some case studies and also some tools. Where can you publish? What tools can you use? What are these tangible resources that we can use? And the second session, the second hour of the day, we will try to understand how to better plan our resource, you know, our educational resource online. Uh, tomorrow, we will understand the importance of open license and why team, I think most of you know team. So we'll try to understand why team keep talks, keep Talk, he keeps talking about open license, you know, just because it, it's super important. Admit. Um, and in the end, I will ask you to present your project, your open resource project. It's an exercise that we have in the end of the day today that we will go home with the planning and you'll try to organize the content that you have, some content that you have, some idea that you have, and how we will present it as an educational resource, okay? So this basically is the course. So in the day one, oh, we had this idea uh, when we first talked about the web, me, Steven, and Yana, about how to bring more people, invite people to be part of the, the webinar. Uh, I invited Adriano, he will join us tomorrow, uh, but I couldn't invite anyone for today. So I have an idea of adding a lot of videos with a lot of people talking. So it's not just me talking about it. So uh, I will ask you to note how I wrote it. You know, I wrote this webinar, the one you are seeing here. So you will be able to replicate it. So I give you instructions, you know, so the first moment, what we are doing now is this introduction to open educational resource and their importance. And then the instructor will briefly overview and why they're essential in education. You know, cover the advantages of open, such as cost savings, 
accessibility, customization, you know? Why all of this? So I invited this much nicer people to talk. Please let me know if you are hearing the sound. OER are open educational resources. These are uh, materials that have had an open license applied to them. So it could be a full textbook, a single unit, a worksheet, an interactive activity, anything that helps with teaching and learning. They can be printed out into physical copies for a very low cost and given to the students. It can also be an online resource as well. So open educational resources include not only openly licensed materials, but also resources that are in the public domain. This includes everything from photos from NASA to reports published by the government and uh, even things like bills and laws. OER are different than uh, traditional published resources because they come with the, the license to make adaptations to the material kind of baked into the resource um, from the beginning. Open educational resources can be considered as free plus permissions. And those permissions are five R's. You can reuse, remix, revise, retain and redistribute the content. Reuse means to take a resource and use it in any context you want. Remix means taking multiple resources and mixing them together and creating a new resource out of it. Revise means to make a copy of the resource and actually change it and adapt it to the local context. Retain means to keep and control a copy of the resource forever. And finally, redistribute means the right to freely share whatever you've created. Those people are super nice, you know, the, uh, can you still hear me? Let me see if you muted. No, they didn't. So the Council of Chief State School Officers, it's a website full of reserves. I super suggest you click on YouTube, go to their website and explore it more, you know? So what else we will check in this session one? These basic concepts, you know? As you see, the basic concepts around it is these reserves are available. I'm from the 70s, you know? For me to study, it was super crazy, 70s in Brazil. You know, we had to roam around the books. It was super difficult. Sometimes government used to lend some books to students. It was super crazy. And you used to use a book from 10 years ago that 10 students already used for a year. It was, a lot of things change here, you know? And open education reserves is about access, you know? And you just can access all these things because they are open to be accessed. They use license. We live in a road created by Walt Disney. Do you know Walt Disney, the guy from the Mickey Mouse? Uh, Walt Disney had an idea 70 something years ago. He had this idea that I'm drawing this mouse. I have to keep this mouse with me. And then he started lobbying some people in the United States government to create this thing called copyright. You know, so basically for the last 70 years, Everything was copyright. Everything was not allowed. But not allowed to reproduce, you know. If I wrote a book, if I used to write a book 50 years ago, you would not be able to read my book. Instead, you should pay for a publishing company. And up to now, most of the books are like this. Not the most anymore, I think. This is good. But okay. Uh, so basically, when the free software movement arrived, well, this free licensing for software becomes uh, free license for software is super crucial. You know, if you are a software professor, professor and all the computer softwares are private, are closed license, how will you teach your students if you cannot use the code? You know, so... The free source software movement was fundamental to bring out this idea of open licensing. And up to now, 
thanks God and thanks for the software, we have a lot of op different open license around so you can use to your things, you know? So you have an open license for hardware, you have open license for books, you have open license for software and so on. So basically this is what make, made open educational resources possible, right? So we will check this now in the first chapter. So you also have the cost savings. You don't need to buy a book anymore. You just pay for a monthly internet plan. And sometimes you don't even pay for it. You can download using public schools and this kind of thing. You know? It also provides you accessibility. What do I mean? If I'm from Brazil and I live in South Sudan and I want to keep studying in Portuguese, that is my native language, do you have Portuguese schools in South Sudan? You know? And you can also customize this educational resource here. It's a GitHub page. You know, and many of you already know GitHub. And you can come here and duplicate, fork, you know, fork me. You can go there, fork my project, and create your own. So you can customize to make it better. So let's understand a little bit more why it's so important with another nice video. To build sustainable, strong and resilient societies, we need to be able to access and share knowledge openly. Open educational resources allow us to do so. Open educational resources, OER, are teaching, learning and research materials in any medium, digital or otherwise, that reside in the public domain or have been released under an open license that permits no-cost access, use, adaptation and redistribution by others. A pause. They talk about the public domain. Uh, I haven't talked about it. The public domain is something that is already, uh, it was built, some of this resource that was created more than 75 years ago, if I'm not wrong, you know? So everything before this amount of years, those are public domain. So all these Beethoven songs and Mozart concerts, they are public domain, you know? So if you record it now, you can release a record and people will pay you because you play it, the music, but people will not pay for Mozart or Mozart's relatives. And who is Mozart, by the way? Right, so this is public domain, sorry. An open license respects the intellectual property rights of the copyright owner. It provides permissions granting the public the rights to access, reuse, repurpose, adapt and redistribute educational materials. Open educational resources support quality education that is equitable, inclusive, open and participatory. Open educational resources are central for the development of inclusive knowledge societies and to help achieve the 2030 Agenda for... Okay, the first part was the most important part, but it's online and you can keep reading, you know, but the three things that she said, cost saving, accessibility and customization, you know, why cost saving? Because you can access accessibility. Everyone can access from everywhere, different people, people with different uh, necessities. Most of the times you can create content with for people with different necessities using the tools and so. Uh, for the basic concepts, you know, uh, I have this video that is super cool. But these are the basic concepts, again, freely accessible, open license. These two worlds will be around all the time. You know, this is what it's all about. Open license. Some places, this is really not important. Uh, for example, Paraguay. Paraguay is a country 
quite close to Brazil, like from here, from my home is just 7,000 kilometers. It's our neighbor. So they don't have copyright and <laughs> they privacy laws. No, neither uh, this kind of, you know, privacy laws, copyright, patents, they don't have it. So you can go there and buy books, buy cigars, buy a lot of things without paying taxes, without paying royalties and this kind of things. But this is not normal. You know, this is usually a society follows this uh, copyright laws because this is part of the road uh, road Chamber Organization, Road Commerce Organization, in Portuguese, Organização Mundial do Comércio, Road Commerce Organization, probably. So if you are a signature of this thing in the United Nations, you need to follow copyright law. So this is something important all around, you know, all the time. And also the flexibility of the materials. It can be replicated. Everything that you created and everything that was created so far, it's not ours. It's part of the human knowledge, you know? So this idea of I created, this is my idea, it's super old fashioned, you know, because this is a Walt Disney idea and not a humanity idea. This, this is not how our grand, grand, grandmothers imagine it taking care of the fire, for example, you know? So quite quickly, this last video before we go to the most nice part that are two and platforms. So this is super fast. What is OER? Education Week explains. OER stands for Open Educational Resources. That means teaching materials that are either in the public domain or released under a license that allows them to be freely used, changed, and shared. OER can be a single lesson plan, or a complete online course. Why is the demand for OER increasing? Well, teachers need Common Core content. And new digital and print material can be expensive. Plus, online content is easy to share. Should we have concerns over OER? Standards for student data privacy may vary, so you'll want to be heads up to that. And also, some districts lack the training on how to choose high-quality material. For more about OER, Go to www.edweek.org, keyword curriculum. Edweek.org, you know, Education Week, I suggest you the ones that love education. It's a super nice website. Uh, and Dania, thank you for your question. Uh, I don't think it's, you know, I never thought like this. It's like uh, Daniel posed a question in the chat. Is there a this link? I like the concept. Is there a this link between open education resource and intellectual property? It's a struggle, you know. Uh, uh, it's I I think, and my opinion, I think this 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 question is there's no right question, but opinions. I think it's a struggle, you know. So. When you create this resource, you know, when you open freely your, the content of your work to others to share, you are saying to the world that you do not agree with intellectual property. And overall, I will, I will open the window just a second. And overall, you don't agree with the idea of knowledge property. You know, uh, because the knowledge is part of humanity. So I like very much your question. I don't have this answer if it's true or not, but I like it as a this link. But I myself would pose it as a struggle, you know? So tools and platforms. I will add here some tools that we we will explore. Around this, we have here some proprietary tools, some open source tools, some tools that you can use to share your things, some tools that you can use just to grab content. So let's try to take a look because I find this the most important part of the, this content, you know, of this webinar. I will add me this next person. So. 
So to find open educational resources or OER, there are a number of repositories or sites available online. If I were to search for OER on the web, I would use oercommons.org. There's a search bar right there on the home screen so that you can enter a keyword and filter by subject or by common core standard. The resource that I recommend first for any faculty member in higher education to look at is the Open Textbook Library. And you can actually search the catalog by subject and you can also read reviews by faculty members. So if I was gonna search for OER on YouTube, I would use their filter for Creative Commons licensing. Similarly, if I was searching for openly licensed images on Google, I would use their open license filter. Librarians actually play a really important role in helping to find educational resources, and many academic librarians have actually created guides for their campuses listing many of the places that you can find OER. So to tell if something is an OER resource or not, you should look at the bottom of the website or a page of the resource itself. And you'll want to find that Creative Commons or CC logo with a circle around it that'll tell you the license type and what you can and cannot do with it. The number of platforms available to find open educational resources is growing every day, but we're excited to see where the field goes. So basically, there's no right to, you know, the two fits your content, your necessity, and your idea for that moment, the, the content you are creating. So feel free to use any tool, just like uh, Stephen said, uh, outputs, activities, outputs, training methods, innovations produced by AskNet are meant to be shareable. People want to learn from you. You know, so let's take a look at some tools that have around and how this, uh, but especially I would say everything is, it's a question of how one deals with it. Attribution and creation of people's work is extremely important. Ah, uh, right. Some lines do not ask for attribution. They are declared as entirely public domain, but general knowledge where you have used materials, a key point. Exactly. Uh, we will have more about, this is what Stephen said on the chat. Uh, we have, we will see more about this license and how you uh, give the authorship of the, the product itself, you know, the different kind of license, different types of license. Uh, we will see it tomorrow. But uh, yes, you are not saying you are taking it for granted, you know, it's mine, you know, you were built upon others you know you can see here ccso you know we know her name we 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 want to learn from that so let's take a brief look this is a super proprietary <laughs> even though it's open so it's a it's a ngo you know i would say can academy it's a super well known educational resource, but it's not that open, you know, you can register yourself as teacher, you can use all this content on your classroom, especially if you work in the United States, or if you want to follow some content in English around uh, pre-K, what they call it youth education, you know, in Brazil would be uh, second and high school. And what is super nice about we have a lot of content. And if you are dealing with students, if you want to share, if you want to replicate it, some of the content you can, some of the content are Creative Commons, but most of the content are not. And this is super tricky because remember our, our guest who told in the video now, you know, look at the bottom of the page to check the content. Look at the bottom of the page. This webinar is licensed under Creative Commons license, you know? And if you go to Ken Academy, you do not necessarily see this. Let it open. Uh, but it has some basic concept that I would like to explore here. here. It is a video-based instruction. This is super cool, you know? So it's more videos, seven minutes video, five minutes video, three minutes video, videos that explain just a piece of things about computer programming, economics, history, science, maths, a lot of, you know? So I'll take just geometry, just for instance. 
keep it growing. It has practice exercise. It's super nice to have in this open resource content, something that the student can download, can use as exercise, can survey online. You have an online survey. You have, you know, this is our super something to do at home. Practice exercise are super important in this, you know? And you see here, they have a lot of content. Unit one, let me make it bigger. Oops, wrong. No, unit one, performing transformations, properties, unit two. And then you go, you know, you have points, you have admit someone. Geometry, and then you can make the last thing I would say, oh, oh, here. It has a personalized learning path. You know, you can go there, create your learning path, or register yourself as a teacher and create a learning path for your students. And this is usable. Some things you can replicate, you know, and some things you cannot. But this is an example I had here about how a student created its all path in the platform and share with his teacher, her teacher. And then at some moments, everyone in the class were using Khan Academy. But look, this is very private, you know, but impact and benefits, accessibility, self-paced and personalized learning. This is super nice. I'm getting old, you know. I have my son to take care. I have a lot of things to take care. I'm the classical single father. So I don't have time. I need different time to study. I cannot go to universities from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So I can have a self-paced learning environment, you know. Uh, you can have supplemental support. It's, it's a super nice tool for supplemental support for students, I would say. And you blend the learning in the classroom, you know, but it's private. What takes us to OpenStax? OpenStax is super famous. I, I have the link here. You can check later. OpenStax is just about textbooks. A lot of textbooks, people, about everything you have an idea for students in your United States, high school. A lot of things from the United States here I have some examples from Europe, some examples from Brazil, but feel free to find examples everywhere, you know. Uh, so you can go, for example, business subjects. I know educational system in South Sudan might look like educational system in Brazil, but in the United States, you have accounting in your high school, you know, organization behavior, statistics, marketing. And if you think, oh, I didn't have microeconomics in my high school, so you can at least come here and download some books and read, you know, and you can even suggest a correction or recommend it to someone. I super love this OpenStax because it has a lot of content. And I myself have read some of these books and I suggest to you, you know, I think I will close this because this is for later. Uh, support seven, 12 million students already using OpStax. So we just need you to use it now and to share with your students. And, you know, so another example similar to these ones. What is similar to these ones? Can I come up as you go there, you take the resource, but you don't share your resource there. But, you know, Europe, Europeana, I would say in Portuguese, Europeana, uh, it's a bit different because if you are from a cultural institution in Europe, you can share your content here. But what is nice in Europeana? Discover digital cultural heritage from Europe. Uh, I would love to have this for all the content indigenous in Brazil. We have so far nice tools here, but it's also nice to see all this art history from Europe in European, you know? You can, can go there and check, for example, uh, okay, multilingual access, digital aggregation, what does it mean? If you have a cultural center in Europe, you can aggregate your content to this platform. It's a centralized access for this cultural content in Europe. 
you know, uh, people can collaborate and engage, you can create group, you can tag your content, you can comment on it, you can share your group, so you can create a group for your classroom to start bah, whatever, Portuguese art from the seventh century, and then you can create a group and share everything. And you can curate content as well to create exhibitions. You can create exhibitions around uh, Van Gogh in your school and you can create, you know. It's very European art centralized, but some people pay to go to museums to watch it. Why not watch it for free, you know? But there are some really nice, you know, migration networks. There are some really nice, in, nice impact and benefits. So. If I come here in South, South Sudan, let's see what do we have in Europe about South Sudan. A lot of things. Wow. I saw this picture already. You know, so this is the content in the European cultural heritage around South Sudan. You know, 37 pages of content. I suggest you to che check at least, you know, uh, and to meet someone in the classroom. Uh, what is nice? Preservation of cultural heritage, you know, so you can create your own South Sudanese platform to preserve cultural heritage. It's super important. It's the identity of our civilization is cultural heritage, you know, and people don't care that much for it. So I think this is the nice thing about European, and this is the reason I bring it. Accessibility, inclusivity, just like OpenStax. Education and research, just like OpenStax. Why? You know, it provides a wealth of primary source materials. What is primary source materials? You saw the plants from South Sudan? You know, this is a primary source material. Someone that have been in South Sudan some years ago, and where is the date? In 1980, and took a picture of this or, or brought this to the table, said, this is what, you know, the people that really made it, Van Gogh himself, you know, so it's a primary source materials. Uh, and it's a cross-border collaboration. I can create a group with with you just to start the relation between South Sudanese, South Sudan and Brazil in the European cultural perspective. You know, we can create this group and study about it and check these things. So this is the reason I bring European to the table. I think it's a super nice website where we can learn a lot, you know? And now, I'll bring another thing. The open source community at Samoa, Khan Academy, OpenStax, European, all these websites, they are system. They are what we call in the technology, sorry, I was at a meeting so long. In the technology area, we call the learning management system, you know? And what is a learning management system? I will invite someone else to talk to you about this, someone that shared his content or her content online with an open license that now I can use it and you can learn it and use it again. Once in LMS, everything you always wanted to know about learning management systems. All right. I started being so excited to talk about it because I knew this guy was really excited, you know, like really whoa i'm from ohio i'm so excited once in lms everything you always wanted to know about learning management systems but were afraid to ask learning because you use it to deliver education courses management because it helps you organize these courses system because an lms is a computer system it is a software program that helps you create manage and deliver e-learning courses just like Gmail helps you send emails. Who uses an LMS? Businesses of all sizes. Various organizations from UN to your local co-op. NGOs included. Government agencies and local governments. Schools, universities, colleges. Online and e-learning from Khan Academy to lynda.com. 
how to create an e-learning course. Write or import content. You can do it inside the LMS or import materials from various sources. Word document, PowerPoint, Wikipedia. You will have multiple tools at your disposal to organize your course, deliver it to students, and make sure everything runs smoothly for you and your learners. Monitoring. Whether you're dealing with 10 or 10,000 students, an LMS gives you automated and quick access to grades, records, stats. What about the deployment options? Locally deployed, self-hosted LMS. A web app that you get to install and maintain on your own server. Cloud-based LMS. Server monitoring is taken care of for you. Private cloud, hosted LMS. Halfway between the locally deployed and public cloud options. Now you're ready to create your e-learning portal. Talent LMS. The yeah, Talent LMS is a company, as you can imagine, and they are selling LMS. Why they sell LMS? Um, if you are one of the executives of um, Apple, for instance, it would like your employees to be always on the same page. How do you do this? You train them. And how do you train them? You have your all educational resource online, not necessarily open, but you have a LMS to take care of the training of your employees, you know? Or if you have an NGO, for example, like Gig, some of you here knows Gig Red, that is super huge, and we are trying to understand this. We need a learning system for new members so you can go in, understand what is happening, what is standing, what you are part of. You know, so this is the reason there are so many people around educational resource. But basically, a learning management system is a place where you can host your educational resource. If you want to have a Khan Academy yourself, the uh, Khan is the name of the guy that created. I think he's a bit selfish, but his name is Khan, and his first project was called Khan, and his venture capital initiative was called Khan, and his academy is called Khan. And so, if you want to have you, for example, the Given Academy or the, where is everyone here, you know? Yara Academy, that Academy, Yin Academy, you need to install or create a learning management system. You know, there are some available results there, are, but there are not so many that you can go there and just add your results. So that's the reason we will, we will take a look in some systems like this, you know? They have been around for the last two decades. Where have you been the last two decades, people, that you don't know Moodle? And, and they vary features and license, you know, just like Steven said. I would highly discourage the use of MMS Word. Yes, I would super disencourage as well, Steven. Steven said super uh, nice content, you know. Uh, as much as why it's important to keep open. Let's take a brief example. And then you have all the content of your organization, like uh, I add here the name of your organization. What is your name here? Julie, the dream production, you know? So you have all the knowledge of dream production in Microsoft Word. Or it's just an example. And then Apple buys Microsoft, some crazy things happen, Elon Musk buys everything, and then it starts to charge you $2,000 per year to give you access to your own content, and then you lose access to it. Or it bankrupts Microsoft. You know, Elon Musk buy Microsoft, after two years, it bankrupts it, and no one will be able to use their protocol anymore because it's a private protocol. It belongs to Microsoft. And then, Julie, you will not be able to access your documents anymore. And then in 120 years from now, 
your grand grandchildren will not be able to access your documents anymore. Maybe if Microsoft lasts for 120 years, you know? So you need to use tools that the protocols itself are open. So in 120 years, if your grand grand grandchild discover all the documents you produce in Julie, she you look at the screen of her computer and said, "Oh, it was producing your open library, open what's the one uh, library office? Oh, it was creating library office. Library office so outdated. Oh, my great grandmother, she was so old. But library office protocols are open, and then I can create a new software." using these protocols, and then she will be able to read all the content Julie created, you know? So using open source protocols to manage your content, to manage your knowledge, it's quite a fundamental for the future, you know, and for the long future, I would say. So, and these LMS systems are also used for school training centers, college, universities, corporate hospitals, angels, whatever, you know? And there are some nice open source seasons, you know, not Khan Academy. So I added here some Moodles, Opino, Open edX, Sakai, Chamilo that is from Spain, Forma. Uh, each of these learning seasons has its own features, advantages, disadvantages. They are not easy to install. They are not easy to maintain. Uh, be aware if you want to install one of these things. Oh, I want my Julie Academy. Julie, you, you need a lot of work, a lot of hours installing, managing, and, and making uh, someone admit, you know, so but you will have your Julia Academy. You can have your AskNet Academy, you know? To have a learning management system is not something for one person. Maybe if you can, but maybe if you can, you know? If you can, maybe you can do it as one person. But this, these are for communities. These are for enterprise. Uh, using software with open protocols like LibreOffice, when I comment crazy things, I'm reading the chat, okay, people? And and by the way, the last version of LibreOffice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask an Art Academy, yeah, great idea. Uh, Tim will have a webinar with you talking more about some results for AskNet, and maybe this is another point for it. But AskNet Academy is something really necessary. You don't need necessarily to install your tool. You can use some of the, the tools that I already have around, but we'll go for it. Uh, and those screenshots are from Moodle, you know, Moodle for, for mobile. Everyone loves Moodle. Uh, here in the Moodle net, you can have results, for example, download and add to your Moodle instance. You know, you have collections of content. So you can even go there and download your e-commerce, e-business course, evolution of your com. You know, so you say to Moodle, you add to your collection or you download. So what is Moodle itself? Moodle is a software that you can install on a server, you know, and I don't know why Bing is showing here, but <laughs> let's use Bing. Crazy money, but okay. Uh, this is not installing Moodle. This is what I want. Someone to admit. You know, it's something you install in your hardware, you install in your server line, and then you will have, sometimes I try to make it bigger than I can. And then you have your own content learning management system. It's, it's super huge, it's not easy to maintain, it's but it's super nice. And most of the places are using that using open source, whatever, they are using Moodle, you know? It's a nice tool. It's the mobile version is much better than the, the, the desktop version. They 
they had a super nice implementation on UX and UV in the mobile version, uh, but the desktop version is a bit ugly. Opinion is another important thing, you know, uh, but it has an enterprise thing. You have to download their business model is very expensive for the local communities, but you can try to install and run yourself. Open EDX is the tool behind EDX. EDX is just like an academy, but much nicer. I will talk about it later. But Open EDX is the tool they use. You can also install it, but you can also use it if you pay a little bit and this kind of thing. Uh, Sakai, it's a Moodle similar software. It has a nice community. Uh, you can download, install your software it's in your server. You can also install it on your LAN. Do you remember LAN when you have these internal networks? You can have internal network with a Sakai just in your school, for example. Camilo is the, prefer the preference for Latin Americans, you know, because it was developed in Spain. So most of the documentation is Spanish. So a lot of people in Latin America are using Camilo. It has a strong community in Latin America. Uh, the same thing you download, install in your server, and take part of the community. And a former, at least, you know, it's another super huge platform, nice UX, nice interface for users, uh, but need a lot of resources from the computer hosting it, you know? So, yes, do you have a question? I hate Moodle. <laughs> yes, this, are, this is from the chat. Uh, the things, the links here, all the links are here, you know, all the links are here on the this webinar I shared in the beginning. I can share here as well, but if I start copying and paste, all the links I have here might have a lot of time. We might spend a lot of time on this. So I actually... Oh no, I pasted it, the links didn't come, you know? So I ask you to later check the content here. I'll share the link to this webinar again. And then you have all the links here, you know, forever. Uh, not forever, but for the time that Microsoft keeps GitHub online. Uh, let's wait for Elon Musk not buying Microsoft. Let's hope actually. So, okay, some questions. Do you have a question around what is an LMS? What is the difference of an open source LMS, the content that are private, this kind of things? Good to know. So let's move forward with some other mm, Examples, you know, I will try to check all these tools before the end of the day. Though these are a very famous uh, tool called the Open Education Resource Commons, you know, it's a very well known repository. A repository of what? Of content for learning management system. You know, so if you have a Moodle installed in your software, there are some microphone that is open. Uh, Yara, can you please try to? It's Barbara's. Barbara, are you mute your microphone unless you want to say something? Do you want to say something? Oh, thank you very much, Barbara. Uh, so if you have, for example, I'll open here, the open. You have five, if you have Moodle installed, for example, for AskNet, uh, not Moodle because <laughs> Stephen hates Moodle. I myself, I don't like Moodle that much as well. It's super annoying. Uh, does using this tool like Google Docs or Amazon Words create source file materials of a, not really up a good question, Yana. Since you already the right people to use this tools.
You see that I'm thinking, you know? If you could see the scene, I'm thinking. I think it's a very broad question, you know? If I use if I use it open Microsoft, for example, Microsoft Doc, Microsoft Word, sorry, to create this content, all this content that we were watching here, and then later I copy it and paste it to somewhere else where people can access, you know? Then let's say it's an open educational resource, you know? Google itself, it has a Moodle-like environment, call it Google Classroom. I myself, I have a, I have a, a course in Google Classroom, you know? Uh, can I say it's open? I can say it's available, you know? But the content itself, oh my God, I tried to open a tab and... Uh, I can say it's available, but the content itself, it's not mine. It's Google's content because I accept the, the, the license terms, you know? So here are the activities. It's in Portuguese, you know, each chapter. Uh, so we have some videos, you have some PDFs, you know? Um, and then you click, you watch the video, and then you have some... And this time I used to have dreadlock, isn't it? Yeah, and I used to use reggae music. Hola. Hello. So, you know, I use it Google. I have this course in Google, but you can access if you use Google too, if you if you have a login Google, if you allow Google to download your data if you pay for Google somehow for a suit and this kind of situation, you know, if you pay for, but the content is not mine. Here, this content here, it's simple tax. You can go download, you can even export, you know, you can uh, export it as a PDF. I don't know how, and I will not look for it now, but you can export as a PDF. You can export as a text. You can even copy and paste as text you know, and add it to your simple platform. For example, I love too much to use this software here to write. I know people love Google, but when I go write, I just like to write. You know, here I prepare it. I didn't use a Google Docs to prepare. I use this platform here that is super nice. And now, I can just came here and paste what I copied there. And then I have the thing here, you know? So it's not about only the tool you use to create, you know, but how you share it and how, how easy it is to others to use this content, you know? The content I share with you from Google it's super difficult to use, you know, to have it uh, in a place where you can use that course for AskNet, for example, and to share what I created to people in South Sudan, it's super difficult because it was created, it was meant to be like that. You know, it's Google's idea to have a platform that can, the content can be only used in Google, but, I'm using YouTube nonstop in this platform, you know? So what's the difference? The difference is the license. This video that I'm using from YouTube has a Creative Commons license, and then I can use it, you know? But the protocols, and the protocols YouTube use to show the videos, they are open source. They use HTML for video tag, you know? So you can export videos from YouTube. That's the reason you have so many tools you can go there and download. So I think the question is how easy it is and how far can you go inside the open community? You know, you can share on Google, but you can be part of this huge community of people that want to go beyond, you know? And what is to go beyond? It's to collaborate, 
you know i think that's the main thing i don't have problems to click in a link and go to a google doc you know to read something but i have to say that this kind of things here where i have the menu where i have video where i have links where i have page to the next content i think so much nicer you know uh, and especially for writing the two that i showed you you know i think google docs is so bureaucratic because when i want to write i just want to write i don't need to know what is the font size the chapter you know when i go writing that too i show you i will tell you how big is it but the name of this tool is hedge doc uh let's try this on title here so if you want to add a header you see i don't need to go to some menu and said this is a title this is a subtitle i just made a hashtag and if i make two it's a subtitle and if i make three it's a sub subtitle and i can easily change it just removing you know and once i publish my document just a second google 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 and once i publish my document it's all right, it has the title, subtitle, and sub subtitle. I think it's so much easier and it's beautiful online, you know? <laughs> it's not ugly. I think I myself, I think Google is ugly. You know, so as a stack on board, I don't know. And if I click here and then I publish, oh, it's so beautiful. I, you can even add a GIF on it lightweight yes lightweight markup language uh, why do you need more you know and then you don't you don't need to spend so much time finding the okay this is hard but in the beginning then once you you let it go yeah you know? and it, then you don't need it's so easy to create these things and to follow up and it's lightweight, you know, and people can collaborate, people can write together, you know, I can share or I can make it proper, private and whatever. So it's all about options, you know, it's all about options. It's just like the matrix, the move, you have some pills you can take, you know, it's personal options. I like to make it simple for me and for the others. Uh, okay, people, let's move faster. Just one thing on open educational resource. You have to download these things and add to your platform, the platform you use. So it's super great, but just for the one nerds that already need. So uh, I want to find courses around the business here. I have a lot of courses around the business, introduction to business. You know, it's creative commons. You can use and then you view the results you have to look this one you export to google docs you need you see but you can also save to use in your moodle portal for example or so all this all this content you have in our, our, our commons, you need to have a platform to run it. Google Docs, Moodle, uh, one of those platforms that I show here in the learning management system. You see, Camilo, Sakai, OpenEdX, and most of the content as it's open protocol, it will work in all of the platforms. This is another platform that I love. Do you know WikiHow? WikiHow is a place where you learn how to do everything, you know? 19 ways on how to become a better leader. You stop a dog from pulling on its lash. What does heart mean on social media? Seven reasons caffeine does not affect you. What to do about? What does dreaming about a friend? How to type with long nails? You sleep on a couch? How to care for sunflowers? How to... It's a huge how-to. Oh, sorry, not here. I thought I had an opening. 
you know it's a hill how to get walks off levels and you how to irrigation systems how to solve spring system how to solve different places oh no irrigation system how to solve drip at irrigation system you know how to solar panel how to build a solar panel how to install a solar panel how to make a small solar panel and usually it's a step by step making a do it yourself titanium dioxide solar cell you can start from crack from scratch you know you cook and then you have all the instructions all the step by step what is nice about wiki how you can came here and create your own content as well you know you have to make it in a step by step look like this is super nice huh? since the scratch with titanium dioxide and soup easy you know wikihow is a place where you can come here create your account add to pages add your own page create your all wikihow create your ask net community you know and sometimes this people this thing up peer revise it people revise your things before go online sometimes you go online your community but not for the public it's a super nice website to learn how to's and to publish how to's you know the most trusted how to site on the internet i love wiki hall i suggest you to move to it sometime in your life you know user generated content step by step instructions multilingual support community engagement create groups and so on another beloved platform is Apropedia. Probably you know a bit about Apropedia already. You know, Apropedia is managed by people from the Guild community. And Apropedia is an online platform dedicated to promote sustainable solutions and open collaboration. Of course, I can publish on Google, but I don't know those guys on Google. And I know Emilio from Apropedia, such a nice guy, man. Why I will publish on Google if I can publish it? On Apropedia and, and work together with Emilio, you know? So how can you do solar cookers? I'll make it bigger, sorry. I'll come back here. This is Apropedia, people. You can create your user, you can share your things, you can make part of communities. You have a lot of manuals. So how to do water filters, how to do rocket stoves, how to do solar cooker, how to do compost beans, natural pastings, water testing system, composting toilets, pedal power generators, gray outer systems, echo bricks. You know, many different water filterings on how to do water filterings. Do you need a water filtering system in your region? There are many ways to do it, you know? And here are the step by step. I'll make it bigger again, sorry. You know, so it's a huge, look how many low cost household water treatment system, micro filter dams, saline water filter and so on everything open source of course i could publish all these things on google but here you are part of a community and it's a community that care about the future of the world uh, 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 google is using colorado river to code down their servers they are not really into filtering water you know just for their employees maybe Apropid is amazing people rocket stove you know do you need a rocket stove to cook things faster and with less 
Les, um, what's the name? Sorry, uh, Colt, uh, Colt, Colt Carvão with Les Wood, you know? It's easy to create a rocket stove. Why didn't you create your all to melt down aluminum? And you live in South Sudan. Do you have a solar cooker like this? You know, and why don't you build one? Why don't you replicate one? This thing have open license. It's it's a sunbrella. <laughs> and the sunbrella you can create it because it has an open license. You can replicate it. And you can even create your own umbrella and then write about it on Apropedia, comment on this community, be part of this community and said, look, we create our umbrella. It's a bit different, but it's working. You know, so many different cook umbrellas. How many did you create in your community, in workshops, using the results that are online? You can create a workshop to create an umbrella. You just need to follow up the steps. Sunbrella, sorry. Compost bean. Do you need a better soil to grow food? So you need a compost bean. Do you know how to create one? It's easy. You have more than 20 models here. So let's create a workshop on how to living a sustainable life in a refugee camp promoted by Apropedia and Asknet. You know, it's, it's available, it's online, it has an open license. You can replicate natural paints, water quality testing. Is the water you're creating nice enough? Is it good enough to drink? You know? Composting toilet. There are so many types. In Brazil, I don't know why, there are so many people into this uh, dry composting toilet. And people are so proud after six months to put their hands in that soil made of shit and to put it all around. And they use to create... I will show one thing here. Certo. This place here, it's a open source collaborative high school agroecological in the drought area of Brazil. This is the drought area, all these trees, all this food, you know? Uh, I need pictures, but basically you can check here. Uh, Everything they they grow here, they have more than 35 years. Oh, they they are huge now. They have a lot of trees and they grow food and all based on their shit, <laughs> you know, because they have composting toilets and how to create one. Follow the step by step from an open educational resource provided by some nice guy or girl around the planet, you know? high tea community composted toilet. high tea is one of the most critical nations in, in Caribbean, you know? Super turmoil system and then earthquakes and then, so, you know? Look how they created. This is a storage tank, you know? And probably a step-by-step. -step givelove.org you know there's one called give here so this is our round apropedia you should go to apropedia you must develop workshops with the content around with the community you know cc for d tech also cc for asknet publishing your innovation outputs such as wikihow and Apropedia are two top excellent platforms. I do agree with Stephen, you know. You can publish on this place. Emilio is our friend. You are part of Geek Network. Emilio is part of the Geek Network as well. And in the page here, I even add two videos, you know, impact and benefits, allowing to access practical information, collaborate on sustainable solutions. 
you know, empowers communities by providing with tools, resources, and lots to tackle sustainability. And here you have one hour video with Emilio about why use a propedia, you know, and then and then a second video about how to document projects in a propedia. So it's a step by step to go there and share your content. And you can do to Apropedia YouTube video, YouTube channel, and learn more. You know, learn more around how to publish, where is the how to hear, because they have in Spanish, in Portuguese, how to, 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 you know, and more a hundred of feeds around their prototypes themselves. So I just have one expression go for it. You know, make a make a make a favor for yourself. Go for the originals. You know, create the bricks for yourself. And I didn't share that one that I want to show again. Create bricks, people. Create bricks. Uh, generate power using an old bike, people. You know, <laughs> collective generate power using an old bike. Do you need electricity? You know, do you have an old bike? You can create your own power supply station based on beans. So, okay, I'll go faster now because we are running out of time. So we also have Gitbook. Gitbook is platform the platform I'm using here. You know, so I have the picture of this page here. It's a meta course, you know. I'm using Gitbook. Gitbook is so easy to use to set all these chapters here, to plan your results, to, you know, it has virtual control, collaborative editing, real time preview, enable users to organize into chapters, sections, subsections. This thing I made here. Uh, Ah, yeah, you can publish on Apple if you are not a Geek member, for sure. It's open for everyone. You know, it's open for everyone. In GitHub, the same thing. I will add to this page here so you can see. Uh, I need to go to my page. Um, just a second. It's super half Git book. So... Here am I. So here's the content, you know, the content of this course. We are in the page tools. We are in Git book. And I can came here and add it. Okay. I'll add an image. This image here. Merge. Sorry, here. And it's already here. All right, the image is on, of course, now. But as this is the wrong image, I will remove it. Oh, I have to add it. Sorry. Merge. Much easier. How can you do this thing on Google Docs is what I don't know, you know, create a menu where people can navigate. That's the main thing. How can you make it simple to add an image? And it, uh, it's, uh, I love Gitbook. So, sorry, I will get out from here. You can always use Gitbook. You know, it's easy, it's faster. The platform itself is proprietary, but you can export everything as text, as PDF, as whatever. So, if you came from here and export as PDF, and then you have a book of this webinar, it's so nice. I have to be logged in to, to export, sorry. So I, I'm watching the chat again, South Sudan and Africa in general. This is from Matthew, people. South Sudan and Africa in general are enslaved to Microsoft. The road, Matthew, welcome to the road. And to change that requires a huge investment. Uh, look. We don't also need to change that. We can just change ourselves, you know? We can just change our community, the way we do things. Due to so many factors like lack of knowledge and skills, key, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
do you think it's nice for the AskNet gig network to have targets or numbers to be reaching on user per source software? Uh, Matthew, nowadays, I don't think it's the numbers, you know, numbers are super important, and but they came from impact, you know, uh, I think we should understand what is the impact we want to create, you know, uh, the impact we want, I want to create, for example, with this really, is to have, uh, uh, to have a tree in South Sudan in 35 years from now, or in Uganda, sorry, in 35 years from now, that was grow in the sheet you created in a dry toilet that you build after a workshop using appropriate resource. You know, so this is the impact I expect from this workshop in 35 years time. And maybe the number of people that will be on the shadows of these trees, it's, it's the number that I, might be interested in this impact, for example, you see. So uh, it's I've been part of a community in Brazil that tried to implement open source software in government during the 2000, you know, and we made really nice gains into that, you know, we could make it possible to most parts of Brazilian government to use free software for a while, uh, but it was temporary. And what were the impacts from that? Well, I think it's the community, the open source community in Brazil. It's nice. You know, they're growing. There are nice things around. People are creating content, creating open source software, creating open source uh, artificial intelligence language systems in Portuguese, in, in, in indigenous language. Those are the outcomes, you know. But to change the whole mindset of a population to use open source, I don't think this is our role, you know? Our role is to change ourselves, I think. Uh, that would view you more, yeah. To me, that it's a knowledge issue because all chief personal computer users also come with Microsoft. Ah, the chief personal computer. Okay, so we arrived here before we come to an end. People. Let's move fast, sorry. Uh, we were in Gitbook. For this, we have our next tool that is called Edubuntu. Edubuntu Dutch uh, is the world think is a slave to MS. Yes, Stephen, I do agree. Yes, I do agree as well. Freeing from Microsoft Office a good start, you know? Freedom for every classroom. So we are moving away now in our example from the, this online resource to a more tangible resource, you know? So Edubuntu, I would say, is a tangible resource. What is Edubuntu? Edubuntu is a Ubuntu. Probably most of you heard about Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an open source well, message here. Ricardo, I agree with you on the issue of the impact, but we need more motivate ambassadors yeah i do agree we made like these motivating ambassadors and deputies and this kind of things you know and it was nice it worked for a while uh but the impact was not in the government you know what i meant is that the impact was not in the government or in the brazilian population it was in the open source community then you know that was i was uh, mentioned that uh so this Ubuntu is a Linux system, Ubuntu based, that you download and then you install in your classroom and then you can make really old computers work together in a way they call it the Linux Terminal Server Project, more very well known as LTSP. So what does it mean? LTSP, it's a it's operational system just like Windows, but when you install it, you have a lot of educational software pre-installed, you know, games for children, games to use in classroom, typing exercises, maths exercise, geometry exercise, English exercise, English tools. It's apps, you know, just like you have you have Microsoft Word, you have Tux Calc. 
that is a place to teach children or make cal calculations, you know? So this kind of thing. But the nice thing is that you can have just one nice computer and then use an uh, learn internet, you can use the ethernet cables to create a network of old computers using the same server. So it's what people call dub terminals. You know, you have a team client server environment. So this case is still super nice. You know, the guy had no money, but want to implement this steam educational system in his classroom. And then he created this lab with clean type clients, you know, using L LTSP. What is Team Clients? It's a computer without a, a hard drive, few memory RAM, just a keyboard, a mouse, and a, a screen, you know, and then you can have a whole classroom running in the same server. So let's check this video. Hi, my name is Jim Mann. This is the Green County Public Library here in Zenith. This is old people because nowadays all library in the United States can have their all super nice computers people to people to use. But this was not the reality some years ago. And maybe this is not the reality in some of the communities that you are working with. So that's the reason I choose this old feature. Sorry about the audio and about the the, the screen. In Ohio, we're probably the 11th. And yes, he's also from Ohio. Hi, my name is Jim Mann. This is the Greene County Public Library here in Xenia, Ohio. We're probably the 11th largest library system in the state, sort of a medium-sized library. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about computers in your library and how you can maximize the use of the old equipment and so forth that you have. So come on in, let's take a tour and see what we're doing now. Come on. These computers offer a variety of games for children from kindergarten up through about grade two. In addition, we offer computers for teenagers and young adults. These are a little bit special in that we offer some of the more entertaining games that they can play. Hopefully there's a learning experience and we offer word processing. And of course, we offer computers for the public where they have internet access, they have access to our databases, they can do word processing, they can enjoy MySpace, they can download music, and everybody enjoys it. It's one of the great services that we provide here. But there's more. And we offer a number of specialty applications, like these computers in the Green County Room, where patrons can do genealogy research, they can search specific databases, hopefully to find their relatives, hopefully not to find their relative that was the horse thief. But as you can see, once again, we're using Intel computers, and we've got a little investment going on here. So come on, there's more. We've got more stuff to show you. And we're for... Gosh, they had horse... <laughs> Oh, all right. Sorry. Horse feet in Ohio. <laughs> Hopefully you don't find your relative there wearing horse feet. Uh, what is nice about the Jeans channel? I finished now. He will Fortunate explain enough now to have how, a training lab. You know, he, was, he will explain how to have this training lab and how he created this lab using LTSP with old computers. And I bring here the link to Jeans channel. I suggest you go there and check, check all the videos from him about how to set up this lab. You see here, it, they, he has, I think, 90 videos on how to make these old machines work and create a lab with old computers where people can learn. And this shows us that open educational results are not necessarily just softwares online, you know, this Ubuntu, that is also software you download and put in your pen drive, brings to life old computers, and those old computers become educational resources themselves, you know, itself. You see how crazy is it? I think is more base fundamental. So, Ricardo, I agree with you. Yeah. Steven, to you, private. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the, yes, 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 the workshop continues tomorrow. Sorry, Stephen, yes, we are running out of time for today because I want to show you this thing here. Last but not least, 
code drawings and toy variables. Educational resource open can be also physical. These are three experiences on how to train people on computer program using open educational resource that are physical. So the first one of those is the human Cartesian plane. Basically, it's a toy that you represent the screen here, all the pixels on the screen, and then the programmer tell the others, everyone here are the computers, and this guy here is the, this, the programmer. And then he tells the computers where they will be on the screen, you know, X1, X2, X3. So it's a toy game so people can understand about pixels on screen and learn about it. And the code drawings are the code plus drawings. This methodology is open source, you know, it's an open resource like many other methodologies. So in code drawings, you use drawings to program. For example, this drawing here, it's a software that says, if it's raining, open the umbrella, you know? So also this methodology is open and you'll have the toy variables. Variables are one of the most fundamental concepts in programming, you know? You need to have variables, places on the memory run where you, archive information for a while before you use it and let it go. So they create some toys, for example, uh, a variable float toy where you can ex uh, understand the float X variable, you know, instruction. You have the decimal values float, you know, a declare false, true, if it's false, if it's true, if it's false, X, if it's true, X and so on, you know? And you have the <laughs> integer variable where you use x is equal three. So this is an integer. So basically it's an open educational resource, it's a methodology, you know? And the objects are free to open and use it. Here's the methodology, feel free to come here and learn more about how to use this to learn programming. Of course, YouTube people, YouTube is the world's largest visual sharing platform. You can host a lot of videos there. You can even create a channel. We just saw Gene's channel with all the, the, the videos he shared on how to, how to create your lab, you know? Those are educational results. And if you share in YouTube using a Creative Commons license, then it's an open educational resource, you know? It's YouTube, it's convenient. You know, YouTube is visual, interactive learning. It has a global reach. It is cost effectiveness, I would say. You know, you don't need to pay anything to host your feeds on YouTube. And you can have collaboration there. Some great channels, YouTube, I add here just an example. You don't have to follow this. But for example, this is a 360 experience on YouTube. Like, let's understand the sea and the char sharks, you know. And then you can move your screen around and bring to your classroom. People will understand more about sharks. I don't know where is the shark, somewhere in the middle. I oh, don't know, they are getting me down, you know? So this channel is all about 360 experience, you know? And you learn around this in the forest, you know, in how to be, how is it to be a frog? You know, have you ever thought how to be a frog? And you can share it on uh, learning experience. Oh, physics girl. I love physics girl. Do you want to know more about physics? Her channel is amazing. All the content is creative commons. You can use it. You can use it to explain more about physics. SciShow, it's something from all the world, you know? Do you want to learn it? Sci show. It's it's amazing for young adults, for adults and for teenagers. Who oh, knows everything about science? Easy German. I don't want you to learn the German, but there are so many language courses online. You know, look at this channel. Look at this resource. Everything Creative Commons. Uh, 
And then you have uh, Dr. Becky, if you want to know a little bit about astronomy or my universe, I suggest her channel. Uh, open dot fabula to more makerspace related thing. You know, you have so many channels, just like a propedia open dot, so many channels online about making and making communities with open source video and create not open source, so creative commons. The gig channel itself, of course, a lot of content on creative commons that you can go there, download, use hashtags to be part of the community, so on. So, YouTube is part of Google, you know but it has the ability to share things on Creative Commons. So, it, and much more people, much, much more, you know? Mahara, open source e-portfolio, EDX, MIT course online, interactive physics simulation, CK12 foundation, curricula, open textbook library. There are so many platforms and communities where you can learn and you are, where you can share your learnings as well, you know, depending on the platform, depending on how you use it. Interactive simulations for science and maths people, a real lab in front of you for children, uh, CK12, also for children, young children. Rick, I think is more bureaucratic and more related to company, but it work. Open textbook library, just like the open access share in the beginning, the, the, the open stacks, you know? And these people bring to the end the first chapter. And before the last six minutes, I will bring to you the homework. Page Arch Live Golf here, yeah, folks. Yes. Uh, like Scratch, exactly. Scratch here. Thanks for sharing the link. Uh, Stephen, any question? You know, let me see the size of this video. No, we don't have six minutes. But this presentation. We have a problem. Uh, I will ask you to watch this, this uh, in your homework. So now it's homework, people. Uh, and something to present for tomorrow. I know most of you already have AskNet projects going on, you know, that can become an open educational resource. I know you that are not part of the AskNet network also have your projects that can become open educational resource. So this moment, I want you to reflect on what that you have, your community have, what you build and constructed so far that can become an open educational resource. You know? And we'll see how to plan and organize, you know? You have to define the scope, you know? What's the objective? Define the subject matter and the target audience, you know? What's the subject matter of this webinar here? You know, the open resource bring to people content. Yes, Stephen. Uh, sorry, Ricardo, I didn't want to interrupt you. I, I just put my hand up. Um, I'd like to say something at the end before you go off. So please continue. Yep, please. Uh, all right, before, okay. So, yeah, yeah, so you, I will finish this and I, 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 I call you, okay? All right, so you define the scope, you know, for example, Yes. <laughs> so uh, determine the objectives, you know, this resource here, this webinar, the objective was to make people aware of tools and what is educational resource itself, you know, needs assessment. I made a talk with Stephen, I made a, a, talk, a, a talk with team, many calls with Yara to understand the needs, you know, Structure the content, organize the logical flow for the content, ensure recoverance and easy navigation, you know, divide the content into modules, units, lessons, and then you develop learning objectives and outcomes, you know, a measurable learning objective. We want 
eight percent of the people in this this call to create their open educational resources it's our learning objective you know design the content add methods add uh, strategies content exercise videos images simulations you know uh, and so on licensing define the license and get the user feedback to improve so i bring here two different templates you know this template is very simple the title of your model the learning objectives and quick overview quick one paragraph you know some key concepts one paragraph one phrase the audience and then the content subtopic one subtopic two subtopic three you know the overview the results if you see the one i shared before with you i i made it like this the instructor will talk about this the instructor will talk about this is the topics you know and how are the assessment what are the additional results and especially what licensing you know? what are the publishing platforms you use which is one more than one youtube and and wikibook you know and what are the reference you use so this document here you can use gitbook you can use google doc you can use whatever but where you publish it you know a tip if you plan on gitbook and you're publishing gitbook is much easier you know but i also shared a complete template you can check this spreadsheet here you know it's also here how to provide how to use i have the instructions here on how to use the first model and this this robust template have all the structure here you know uh outline template section title one section title two the lecture title what you share on screen what you share with the description what results you use what time you need to show this you know and if it's video it is a talking head video screenshot article quiz assignment exercise practice you know and here's an uh, uh, an outline example you know with the links and timing and minutes and title and what is going to happen so if you want to use a simple format feel free to use this one here that is very simple if you want to use a more complex sub template use this template here that i just shared now and i want you to bring provide you know using the provided templates plan your open education resource using the project you already want you know for the next meeting tomorrow at the same time we will check a little bit more about the open license system what the difference how can you benefit from that and finally you you present you know group of people will present your template we'll share the link to your template or if you had the time and the opportunity I'll read your template online. I will love it, you know. So feel free to use any of these tools, you know, especially the ones that allow it, Apropedia, WikiHow, or Gitbook. Uh, you can also search for around. If you bring to me a link to Google Doc with everything there, I'll say, oh, cool, nice. But if you bring me everything in, txt you know simple lightweight uh markup language anything like this share it on a hedge doc share it on git book on github anything despite from google i will love you i will love you so i think these are the main things for today we are two minutes late sorry about that but do you have any question, anything in particular around the homework? What did we study so far? If you have any comments around it so we can improve tomorrow, please, this is the moment. And Stephen, also feel free to join the call and bring your perspective and updates.